first power. Have your attention, please. If you're able and willing, would you stand for the invocation? Remain standing for the flag. Dear Lord, we meet here tonight to address issues surrounding the Henry County government. May we be open minded to others' ideas that the difference uh, that is different from ours. May we be able to find some common ground and compromise in such a way that we can all live with the things that we cannot change. May we see and understand what is truly important and conduct ourselves in such a manner that will help us make a fair decision. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm showing 6.30 with the regular Henry County Board of Commissioners meeting 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, November 17, 2015, come to order. Uh, acceptance of the agenda. Uh, we have a, several deletions. One is, if you come down where it says request to address the Board of Commissioners by Steve Richardson, uh, that has been removed by Mr. Steve Richardson. We will not be hearing him. Uh, if you move over on uh, page two, four, it says resolution approving consultant agreement with retiring employee. Uh, that will not be heard tonight, so we will uh, delete that. Uh, also, what I'd like to do, if you move over to page three on the splash, we have uh, splash B. Uh, what was published on the uh, internet was uh, the math was a little off so we got uh, an amendment well now we got a revision uh, that's here and the board's got that so what I'm going to do is once they approve the budget I'm going to let this be a part of it and that way they won't have to give an amended uh, uh, resolution and also under C approving of the budget amendment for the Fairview Road there's some little minute changes there and the board has that one as well. So having said that, if the board would approve the agenda as amended, we'll move on. So move. Have a motion district three? Second. Second district two. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Next, we would like to uh, have a proclamation read recognizing November as Hospital Care Month in our uh, communication director. 
Melissa Thompson will read it. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman and Board. Tonight we have a proclamation in recognition of November as National Hospice Palliative Care Month. Whereas hospice and palliative care empowers those facing a serious or life-limiting illness to live as fully as possible, surrounded and supported by family and loved ones. And whereas hospice and palliative care professionals are dedicated to helping communities access quality end-of-life care and are committed to removing barriers to accessing that care. And whereas this service brings patients and family caregivers the highest quality delivered by a team of skilled professionals, including physicians, nurses, social workers, counselors, aides, spiritual care providers, and others who make the wishes of each patient and family a priority. And whereas hospice caregiver training and assistance, patients are able to live more fully and make meaningful moments until the end, surrounded and supported by the faces of loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas every year more than 1.6 million Americans living with life-limiting illness and their families receive care from the nation's hospice programs and communities, communities throughout the United States. And whereas more than 430,000 trained volunteers contribute 19 million hours of service to hospice programs annually in the United States. And whereas hospice and palliative care providers encourage all people to learn more about options of care and to share their wishes with family, loved ones, and their healthcare professionals. Now therefore, be it proclaimed by the Henry County Board of Commissioners that the month of November 2015 be known as Hospice Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. The 17th day of November, signed by Chairman Tommy Smith, attested by Stephanie Braun, County Clerk. Thank you. I think we're going to get a picture with yes. someone that's coming. What I'd like to do now, I just noticed that I've been put on notice that we're not going to have an executive session. Uh, it's on the agenda, so we don't have any personnel issues. Council, do we? you have any? Nothing we need to do tonight. Nothing? No, sir. Okay. Having said that, if we could at this moment here amend the agenda to delete executive session, reconvene, approval of the uh, Resolution pertaining to executive session. We'll delete that off here. Have a motion to amend the agenda. Have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, so move. Thank you. Consent agenda, the following uh, agenda item shall be considered on the consent agenda. Before voting on the consent agenda, the chairman will provide opportunity to add or delete. Excuse me, chairman. Yes, sir. Public comment. Yes. I was out of order. At this time here, we'll back up. Public comment. Citizens are allowed to voice county-related concerns, opinion, et cetera, that are not listed on the agenda during this portion of the meeting. All persons wishing to speak for public comments must sign in with the county clerk prior to the beginning of the meeting. You must complete the public comment form or you will not be recognized. You'll be able to address the board for five minutes. I'd like to recognize Mr. David Blunt. Five minutes. State your name, please, for the record. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Blunt. I live at uh, 98 Turners Grove Lane, uh, McDonough. I'm uh, speaking on uh, as a citizen of this county. I wanted to ask what you are doing about stopping a leak of public safety personnel from uh, leaving this county. My father was a firefighter in South Florida, and I told him about what I see around here. Uh, he, along with myself, were astonished uh, that we only have two firefighters on the trucks. He told me that uh, you know they had three on every truck since the late 60s, early 70s. <clears throat> That's a, you know, almost half a century. 
and that's pretty, just pretty crazy in my head. The safety alone calls for a minimum of three personnel to a truck, which is an engine or a ladder <clears throat> or a squad. Well, we bought an airport, uh, but I know you're supposed to have what they call a crash truck. Uh, it staffs the runway. We don't have that. I heard of some of the uh, police units don't have enough ammo to practice shooting. I mean, how can you stay good at something if uh, you don't train? Uh, the chiefs can only report to you what they need, and it's up to you to make the changes. You know, I see lots of uh, these uh, real good employees I see at the gym a lot. You know, I hear all the stories. Um, we're just losing a, a large number of paramedics to the hospital because they're paying more. You know, I hear about the compression pay and lack of raises, colas, uh, which by the way, colas not a raise, it's so that people can keep their heads above water. Uh, every time they get a raise, <clears throat> I hear the insurance goes up or they have to contribute more to retirement, you know, or something happens and they just don't see it in the paycheck. You know, my dad has been retired for 25 years. He still gets a 3% uh, COLA every year. I hear about the pension, uh, but if you not get steady raises, it doesn't really mean anything. 100% of nothing is nothing. I have friends I still keep in touch with uh, in South Florida, and they do a 20-year at 80%. They did not want people in their late 50s, early 60s, fighting fire, carrying guns to chase the bad guys. It opens the door for a lot of medical problems. They're both dangerous and physically demanding jobs. The former you guys are going by just not working for these uh, men and women. These men and women spend their entire um, career helping people. Saying we appreciate what you do doesn't pay the bills. They work one to two extra jobs to help pay with the bills. That should be a choice, not a must to survive. They barely have time to spend with their children and spouse. Let us help them be parents and spouses and fix the pay. They should be paid more. In Florida, they call it hazard pay. Public safety would uh, be paid more to try to compensate for the higher risk. Police officers have to carry a gun to work. I mean, do you? I mean, you know, I don't. I'm a taxpayer and would gladly pay a higher tax if it meant better protection for me and my family. My parents live off Snapping Shoals Road, and if Station 10 off Upchurch is out, my family's, you know, pretty much doomed. And I'm highly concerned. That's pretty much why I'm here tonight. Um, I thought Rescue 12 off Old Jackson was supposed to be up 24 hours by now and don't really know what happened to that. And I just didn't know if the people in that area knew about it. We have a history of buying property, um, golf courses, you know, the pavilion at Heritage Park. It's just a lot of money being spent and it's, you know, not really being used, uh, you know, the way we should. Um, excuse me. Uh, does the safety of our voters, you know, not matter? I'm tired of the, everyone nods their heads, you know, just to kind of satisfy everybody. Um, but, you know, or election year is just, you know, time for action to help those who help us. I guess what, you know, we just, they see us at our worst of times. And I guess I take strongly because, you know, my father and uncle were actually both firefighters. So it's a strong issue for me. And, you know, we all sit taking it for granted. And just remember, you know, we'll need them before they'll need us. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move down to the consent agenda. The following items uh, shall be considered the consent agenda before voting on the consent agenda. The item chairman will provide opportunity to address or delete. One is technolo technology services, resolution approving renewal of the network engineering uh, support annual agreement. Second one, district attorney resolution accepting the Victim of Crime Act subgrant and approving the creation of the victim service advocate position. Uh, County Manager, Amendment Resolution to the Board of Commissioners regarding a lease agreement with the Georgia Department of Human Services, Division of Family Services, DFACS. Uh, does anybody like to add to or delete one of these items? If not, if somebody would move to approve the consent agenda as resolutions as read. So moved. So I have a motion from District 5. Second. Second District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Community development, resolution creating house, housing rehabilitation specialist position and amending the community development department budget to fund the position. Ms. Sagnon, good evening. Good evening, chairman and members of the board. 
The position of a housing rehabilitation specialist is being proposed. The position will be responsible for technical field work, inspecting and evaluating private dwellings for housing renovations, in repairs and improvements in compliance with applicable regulations and statutes of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, in addition to the county and state codes, ordinances and regulations. It will be paid 100% through the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and Neighborhood Stabilization Program, NSP grants. The position will not impact general funds. All associated benefits are reimbursable through the grants. The position will assist us or the county in the delivering of the CDBG homeowner rehab programs, specifically the senior housing rehab program and the rehabilitation of foreclosed properties acquired for the neighborhood stabilization program. Under the current housing rehab delivery, 20 homes have been rehabbed with CDBG assistance. It is the goal of the department that, under, that with the additional position, 15 to 20 homes would be rehabbed on average annually. This would be a significant increased increase in the department's efforts to improve the living conditions of Henry County residents. Staff recommends approval of the creation of the housing rehabilitation specialist position and the associated budget amendment. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Uh, if not, we have a resolution in the book. Uh, Henry County Board of Commissioners approving an authorization of the creation of additional position. And if you'll notice in the resolution, it says, uh, whereas a housing rehabilitation special position shall be filled with the understanding that it is grant funded and contingent upon the continued availability of CDBG and NSP funding. Does somebody move? I have a motion from District 1. Second. Uh, second from District 2. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Sign so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Public Works Resolution author authorizing expenditure of resurfacing of all uh, LMIG purchase orders requests uh, using an approved annual contract for each of the items that exceed $10,000. Short timer. <laughs> I got to announce that uh, Terry McMichaels will be retiring from the county on December the 19th. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I have enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, we have a uh, good afternoon. We have applied for and received our annual LMIG funds from Georgia Department of Transportation. In this submittal, we provided a list of roads from each district that we will be resurfacing. Cost estimate was done for each of these roads showing the amount of stone, asphalt, labor, trucking, tack, testing if it was required, full depth reclamation, and striping if required. Some of these items exceed the $10,000 purchase limit, which does require board approval. The items on the list that will exceed the $10,000 limit that have to be purchased are asphalt, trucking, striping, and full depth reclamation. The asphalt um, we have a current uh, annual contract, resolution number 14-115. The TAC is from resolution 14-76. Striping is 12-219, and the trucking is 15-218, and FDR is 15-301. Each of these is an approved annual contract or a contract bid that was awarded by the board. We will be using these annual contracts to purchase these materials. So what we are asking the board to do is approve all the purchases, including asphalt, emulsion, trucking, full depth reclamation, any of these items that exceed the $10,000 purchase limit. Anybody have any comments, questions? Terry, Turner uh, Church Rose on here with a width of 20 feet. And I know the section we talked about, and we talked about widening that road, any. Uh, is that going to happen? Um, use, it's 20 feet. I'm sure we'll widen it uh, as much as we can for the shoulders that are out there. I see we're doing FDR on it as well. So, you know, it's real easy to widen it if you're doing the FDR. So, uh, we'll get as much as we can with the shoulder width that will give us out there so we can. 
Is that a good answer? Yes, sir. Anybody else have any comments, questions? Yes, sir. District 4. More of a comment. Um, Terry, I'm more than happy to, you know, approve this, but I did want to speak to my constituents for a moment. One of the most shocking things I found when I came into uh, office here, uh, the 4th District has only $600,000 a year to spend on uh, uh, actually repaving roads in the district. And uh, the sale money is a large percentage of it, and it's very important to the county. Um, the issue comes in when even uh, a road, let's say Old Conyers in, in my district, if I want to pave Old Conyers in my district, I have to split it up into two different years. From an engineering point of view, this is not the right way to do things. We're getting to a point now that I have roads in my district that are in dire need of being repaved. We don't have the money to repave them, and every year that passes, they get more and more degraded and we are aware of this. I am desperately looking to find other money from not taxpayer, from a different spot, to pave these roads in the county. And what happens if we get behind on paving roads, today it may cost me $300,000 to repave a road. Next year it may cost me $500,000, and the year after that it could be total $1 million. It, it, it escalates highly. So to my citizens, this LMIG is very, very important to us. And uh, again, the, the commissioners are aware that there are, are some issues with the roads in the county. I can point out about 100 of them. And we're working toward trying to find some other solutions to get these roads paved. Um, you know, we, we do hear what you're saying, and I do get quite a few complaints about the roads, potholes, and things of this nature. But we're, we're trying to look forward toward the future. So um, bear with us on this, and we'll, we'll get through it together. I got a little bit I can add to that, uh, sir. If I'm understanding right, uh, because of some recent legislation that was passed, we anticipate getting more LMIG money last year than we did this year. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much, but for the public's benefit, we get about a million and a half dollars through for LMIG, which means Local Maintenance Improvement Grant. We have to put a 30% match with that to get that money. That's $450,000. So through the LMIG program between what we get from the state and what we have to contribute to get it, it's pretty close to $2 million. That gives each district about $400,000 um, to spend on resurfacing. I would hope that I would like to see that number, number double. I don't think it will. I think we'll probably, my guess, and it is an absolute guess, is that we'll get maybe an additional 50% more, possibly more, next year. So um, as soon as we know, you know, we'll know. But I haven't heard exactly what that number is going to be yet. So there is a possibility of some increased funding um, coming next year. So okay. well, I, we'll wait and see. I was just surprised. Help. Again, I was just surprised. Uh, the history of a commissioner, our, our name used to be roadway commissioners, and that was our number one job is to make sure. Commissioner roads. of Roads and Revenue. And at this point, out of all our entire budget, I have $600,000 a year to spend on repaving roads in Henry County in my district, and it's just not going to keep up. So we're, we're working toward a, a new solution, and I'm looking at some other areas. Um, so I'm going to need some, some support when we get there. But just to my constituents, let them know I, I do hear you. And I know I uh, had some complaints out to uh, Cotton Creek subdivision. Their road's turning red now, which is an indication that it's failing. And we don't have the, the funds to fix it. So um, we're moving that direction, and we'll, we'll see what we can do. You finished? I yield for the District 2. Terry, I want to just ask the question. I, I think I know the answer, but I just want to make sure because I've been taking friendly fire from um, people in the area. You know, LMIG project on this list for District 1 and 2 is Bill Gardner Parkway, which is a blessing that that road is being done. But I know Mother Nature has not been our best friend, has she? Uh, we, um, that road was in, I don't know if desperate is even the right word to use. <laughs> in need of uh, resurfacing and widening. So we elected 
uh, to go ahead and do that as soon as possible because right. of the safety risks that existed out there with it being narrow and cracked up and it is what it is so we have all taken a I don't know maybe in a well-deserved beating on that one in the fact that we went ahead and initiated the project um, we did that in hopes that we could go ahead and get it done we tried to push the envelope of men and get it done as quick as possible so yes we have had some rain issues but um, I checked today I think if it wasn't going to rain tomorrow they would finish the full depth reclamation right. and if they uh, do that we hope to start paving the last part of that Monday Tuesday and Wednesday and it's our absolute desire to try to get that whole thing covered up with asphalt by Wednesday afternoon before Thanksgiving that would be outstanding so, I, mean, I get it I we, mean that's if what we can just uh, get some decent weather we'll we'll try to make that happen and get and, and I ask that only because I mean it's it's one of those things in, in governance that it's it's a slippery slope is that everybody complains please fix my road please fix my road you tear up the road to fix it and daggum it if it doesn't start raining and then you know be careful what you wish for because it might be a little slower you know it, it is a little bit better than a dirt road right now I mean if you, I mean it's it's kind of all over the place when you ride on it just because you guys are doing the work but Please be patient, citizens. We're trying to fix it. And I just want to give you a chance to kind of, because we're trying to be proactive with, with getting that done. Yes, it, it probably looks like a bomb went off out there. <laughs> you know. It's not good for the suspension, that's for sure. So, um, but, you know, there's not a good way to do resurfacing, and that road was so tore up that we had to redo the base on the road. It wasn't a simple matter of just putting asphalt on the existing road and might add to that one um, that we did widen that road a foot on each side uh, and we had part of the contract will put shoulders a little bit of shoulder work back in there and the grassing is all part of that contract so they can when we get done uh, they'll have a nice road it'll be a little bit wider foot wider on each side and we hope that we'll get a lot of service out of that so with the improvement, sometimes there is some uh, delays and some aggravations, I know, in, in, in accomplishing that. But bear with us a little bit. We hope that pain will be over with very soon. Thank you, Terry. Similar amount of L LMEG funds last year. Um, I thought with the transportation bill, uh, we would collect a significant um, amount more than um, we did in pre previous years. Well, that's what I was talking about when I said there's a possibility of getting more LMIG funds. It's coming from that transportation bill. Um, you know, and I, I don't, again, I wish I knew what, how much more that was going to, you know, provide us, but I don't know exactly yet, you know, exactly what that number is going to be. I've heard could be, you know, 50%, 60% more. You know, I don't think it'll double, but who knows I mean I think they're waiting to actually get the money in the coffers and then they're gonna see where it goes I know the state itself is ramping up their maintenance as well they're using some of that to improve some state routes as well so I think all of the county will get some benefit from it besides just county roads which is you know what we do in resurface but I think we'll see some improvements from the state routes and other roads as well are um, on the horizon um, from uh, GDOT. I, I don't know. County. I could find out, okay. you know, what 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 improvements they're planning on making, but I really don't know. There's some. I think there's some uh, discussion in their planning organization and of what projects they plan to accelerate, and so they're looking into that now. So right now, I don't know exactly which ones they're planning on accelerating. I yield the floor to District 3. Uh, Terry, I was, uh, now we get funding twice a year from GDOT, right? No, sir. We get, we submit our application in, usually in July, um, somewhere in there, just as soon as we can. When they start taking applications, my application is in there within a week. Um, usually in about four to six weeks, we'll get our LMIG check. So we get paid in advance to do the work. Um, so we usually get it by August. Fred, 
Is that right? August? Yeah, they're shaking their head. I think August, somewhere in there, we get our check. Um, then once we get the check, we can start on the list. So usually August, September, we start on the LMIG projects, but that check will carry us for a full year. So, uh, you know, we'll be submitting again uh, a new list. We'll be putting that together this spring with, you know, with the commissioners, of course, and submitting it June, July. Whenever they open it up for the applications, we'll be ready to submit. And hopefully with more money. Any further questions, comments? If not, we have a resolution in the book for expenditures for resurfacing. We have a motion to district four. Second district five. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so move. Next we'll have a resolution authorizing expenditure for an annual contract for waste, wood, grinding, and removal service. On a purchase order, uh, request that exceeds $10,000. Terry. Our Henry County Recycle Center receives a large amount of yard waste, which is uh, consisting of limb stumps, brush from citizens um, daily. This accumulated waste wood needs to be ground and removed from the site. Trees and Moore was awarded an annual contract on September the 15th, resolution number 15298 for that. Um, we have done our first grinding, um, the, the invoice for that, and I should have wrote it down, but the invoice is somewhere between twenty dollars and $25,000. I'm thinking it's $21,000 something, which has been in our budget. So it's budgeted for. We've done the work through an annual contract again. Um, I just need approval because the amount went over $10,000. The board has to approve any purchase over that so we're asking um, generally <coughs> for the board to approve the expenditures for waste wood grinding that exceed ten thousand dollars i might just add as information we're um, this proved a very successful way to do it the citizens that bring their uh, wood and limbs leaves any type of that product into our recycle center we actually ground it up on site there this year. Uh, then the person who received this contract hauled it down to uh, different plants that they generate electricity so it is being recycled just as it's supposed to. Um, I think we've made a considerable savings this year. Typically what we've done in the past, we've hauled this material over to the DOT yard. So I got to load it up from the recycle center haul it to the DOT yard, then we put out a contract for um, tub grinding. It's then ground up. Then once it's ground up, we haul it again in front of Phillips Drive and offer it to the citizens. Well, we have a pretty good stockpile out there, so I didn't need to keep increasing that stockpile. So this time, um, I feel like um, we probably cut that cost in half by grinding it on site uh, and the material was good enough and clean enough that they could haul it and put it in uh, these electrical plants where they generate electricity and burn it. So they were able to recycle it into that use. So we were able to recycle it, save a lot of money, and just a whole lot of handling of that product we, did, we don't have to do. So this has been a very successful uh, bid and it's worked out extremely well. Anybody have any comments or questions? If not, we have a uh, resolution authorizing expenditure for an annual contract for waste wood grinding. I have a motion, District 3, Second District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so move. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Senior Services, resolution authorizing purchase of flooring for Hidden Valley and Heritage Senior Centers. Ms. Reed, good, e good evening. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. As stated, I'm here requesting approval for the purchase of flooring for the Hidden Valley and Heritage Senior Centers. And happy to Anybody answer any questions, questions you may questions? have. Uh, I, I yield the floor to District 1. I've got a question. Uh, is it Thomas Flooring down in Thomaston, Georgia? Uh, they're not out of Thomaston. They're on the state contract. It is Thomas Carpets. Thomas but Carpets, they do flooring okay. as well. <clears throat> Did we get any bids from the county anybody in the county 
in the preliminary budget last I'm year. Of the, uh, who's approaching the, the podium? Okay. Mr. Rod Gray, thank you. Yes, sir, we, this, this pricing is from a government cooperative purchasing group. So we weren't required to solicit bids for this. So we, we utilized the pricing from, I think it's NJPA, one second please. NJPA pricing, which is a, a cooperative purchasing agreement we use whenever we have an opportunity to. So that would probably be considered the, the lowest bid you would get? Well, I don't know that it's the lowest you can get. It's bid out by another government jurisdiction somewhere and it's adopted by the co-op. So it's been bid out, it's strictly for governments. And so whenever we're able to use this type of pricing, we do, it creates a lot of efficiencies in our process. Okay, I just wondered if anybody else would bid on it in the county, because I know we've got a, quite a few flooring companies in, in the county, so. That we, we didn't put it out for sealed bid. Okay. Is that something we might could do in the future, uh, locally? Would that be something we could consider? We just could add, I know consider it's, it. a, yes, sir, it's already been bid, it. but that would be for consideration. Because I do know you go down the road and you see a lot of people in Henry County that uh, does that kind of work. We can certainly Anyway, that would yes, be sir. for another day. I yield the floor to District 4. I just have a comment. I am very excited to see this. Um, I don't know if any of my citizens have been in the senior centers, but the floors are in very poor repair. And it was kind of shocking to me when I went in there the first time and looked around and the floors looked very bad. And I know. Commissioner Holmes and I kind of advocated for this during the budget season, and uh, I'm glad to see it happen. Um, we need to take care of our seniors. Everybody in here is going to be one eventually. So I'm, I'm more than happy and pleased to see this, and I, and I hope it gives many years of service to the seniors. So do I. Thank you very much. Yes. Anybody else like to make a comment or question at this time? Uh, Diane, are they going to try to get this in before the end of the year? As soon as I get in in the office in the morning, I'm going to work on that. Yes, I hope so. But I have been told that their schedule is very busy from now till the end of the year. I was over at the, the I'm sorry, I yield the floor to District 5. Yeah. I just said thank you. Sir? Don't worry about the chairman. We're fine. Okay. <laughs> I was over there on two occasions this past week for the veterans and at uh, Heritage and the floor was really, really scuffed up. And some people pay good money to get that rustic scuffed up look. But uh, no, it does look bad. I just wonder. Yes, sir. Uh, have we used any of this type of product in other senior centers? I think it's LBT. What's, I'm sorry? I said, are we using this product in any other senior centers? I know you're familiar with the Locust Grove Event Center. This is a simmer. It's a laminate vinyl plank flooring, but it has the look of wood. It has a grain look to it, mm -hmm. but it is a laminate product, which is low maintenance, and there is a 20-year warranty. The senior center in Locust Grove is real wood. I mean, it's engineered wood. Eng it's a laminate product, okay. yes, sir. Okay. Yes. I was just wondering. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else got any comments? If not, we have a resolution of the board. Approved. Have a motion, District uh, Three. Second. Second, District Five. In further discussion, all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. Let's move down to the kitchen equipment. I don't believe you could get the meals any better than y'all provided the veterans on uh, last week for breakfast. That was uh, it was excellent, excellent. So if you need more equipment to do better, then we need to consider that. I appreciate that. We have that. a resolution authorizing purchase mm -hmm. of kitchen equipment for the Kitchen of Hidden Valley and Heritage Senior Center. Yes. And as you know, the buildings are 15 years old. The equipment in our kitchens, of course, the same age. Uh, pretty heavy usage, commercial usage. So we are having quite a few repairs. So we're looking at replacing uh, the pieces of equipment that have the heaviest usage and are in need of the greatest repairs. This is for uh, a piece of equipment called the Tilt Skillet as well as a commercial dishwasher for both locations. Anybody else have any comments or questions? If none, uh, somebody move accept the resolution. Approved. We have motion district uh, three, second. second district four. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. Thank you Thank very you. much. One more, one more thing. <coughs> we, have a, we have a question. We have a, we have a question. I'm sorry. 
I just want to tell you that we're working hard to get you a new kitchen down at the Locust Grove. There'll be a lot of people happy to hear that. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, well, I yield the floor to District 4. Thank you, Chair. Did you get the pool table taken care of up there? The pool table is taken care of. Awesome. I appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Next, we have a resolution authorizing the police department to purchase four 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe Pursuit vehicles at the cost of $139,368. And they're going to use funds from C's accounts. Evening, Chairman. Major. Board, Commissioner. Good How afternoon. are you? Good evening. Good evening to all of you. Uh, this resolution is authorizing the police department to purchase four 2016 Chevrolet Tahoe Pursuit Package vehicles um, for a grand total of $139,368. We're requesting to do this with seized narcotics, seized funds. Henry County Police Department chose this vehicle specifically because we're going to be utilizing them for our traffic enforcement as well as our traffic reconstruction unit. The type of equipment that they're required to do, I don't know if you've ever seen a surveyor that's out on the side of the road, but they have to use a total station, which is a, a surveying piece of equipment. It's very big, it's kind of cumbersome, and uh, this vehicle would be able to give them more access and availability to have it out there. In addition, this is under state contract for the vehicles. So the pursuit package itself is $33,936. We're requesting the inoperable locks, which is $172 more, and a driver's side spot lamp, which is, 100, which is $584. In addition to that, we have to have a delivery charge of $150, which gives us a total per vehicle of $34,842. The total cost for all four of the vehicles is $139,368. And again, funds are available in narcotic cease funds account. Let me ask you a question. This, yes, this is a pursuit vehicle. Yes, sir. But it's four wheel drive. This one is not. We did not select a four wheel drive. It's one well, of the options on four by four drivetrain. Oh, that's not added. That, that would have been a three thousand six hundred six dollars extra. It would have added a lot extra. Yes, sir. Well, um, we're going with the standard package. The only difference is, is this is a police package, but it's the standard police package. Anybody have any comments or questions? Yes, sir, District 4. Major, I know we just purchased four of these not too, too long ago. Yes, sir. And I know they were down getting the equipment put in it for like nine weeks. Yes, sir. Um, this is just for the vehicles itself. We'll go through purchasing again for any of the equipment-related items, and if we need to, we'll put it back out to bid. But we're going to coordinate with Mr. Rod Cray for that. Okay, let, let's not go down that path again. Roger that, was, that sir. You know, we had the, the equipment just sitting for weeks Absolutely. upon weeks, and we need to make sure to get that done. And uh, um, looks good to me. Yes, sir. We'll do better. Any other questions? If not, we have a, a resolution to book resolution. Uh, the Board of Commissioners authorizing the police department to purchase four 2016 Chevrolet. I miss that. So okay, we have a motion for District 5. Second. Second District 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign, so moved. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. Resolution awarding bid for purchase of firefighter turnout gear from uh, NAFCO. Chief, good evening. Good evening. The resolution that you see before you is for the purchase of firefighter turnout gear from NAFCO in the amount of $76,368. Uh, $76, um, this uh, is uh, connected to a resolution uh, 1508, which was issued January 6 of 2015, which authorized the acceptance of a contract for uh, this turnout gear. So therefore, we have bid this out uh, under the bid process, and that contract, um, HC 1522, was awarded to NAFCO for the purchase of uh, turnout gear. We are requesting to purchase um, the amount that I previously mentioned. Um, this um, um, this was budgeted in this year's budget process, which was approved on May 27th, 2015, uh, and it was included as part of our um, 3017 account, which is uh, turnout, which includes um, funds for turnout gear. Anybody got any questions, or comments? If not, we've got a resolution awarding bid for purchase of firefighter turnout. If somebody moves in that direction. So I'll move. Have a motion, District 3? Second. Second, District 2. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So moved. 
Next, we have a resolution approving the fire department to hire 20 certified uh, employees in the amount of 998,996.42. Chief. Uh, again, these um, positions were approved in uh, this year's budget for the fire department, $23 million budget for the fire department uh, in the amount of $998,996.42. Um, and the purpose for these positions um, are twofold. Uh, 20, of, um, 20 positions in total, 17 of those are to be used to staff um, Station 14. Uh, and three of those are uh, to be used to fully staff Rescue 12. Anybody have any comments or questions? I use the Florida District 4. Chief, good evening. Um, I have some questions here, Chief, and, and it, some of it's going to come probably to Ron a little bit. How long does it take to get these firefighters trained, get them in a vehicle, and get them working on their own? Well, typically it takes us uh, 16 weeks uh, for the recruit uh, portion of the training, and we follow that up with the 22-week uh, EMT school. So uh, you've exhausted a substantial part of the year just in, in training. After that, we like to put them online and have them uh, work with our uh, senior people and our, and our training officers to check off and make sure that they are proficient in what they're, uh, what they're doing. So the, the reason for budgeting these positions from October through the rest of the fiscal year was to account for the fact that uh, we will be building the station during that period of time, Station 14 during that period of time, and we will have those personnel ready in time to be able to uh, staff that station when it opens. Here we have station 15 and station 16 that I believe with Ron, they'll be coming online next year or the year after. Do we know? That's really up to the board as to, as to what the board's priorities are for that. I don't want to speak for, for Ron, but if I'm, if I'm improper in saying that, um, that will depend on the board, but you, you are correct. The uh, budget will be impacted by this much or, or more, depending on cost of living and things like that uh, moving forward and, and how you want to bring those online. Well, the reason I ask about the timeline, we've got to get ahead of Station 15 and Station 16. I, I think they are both coming online next year. So we'll, in my understanding, it's 20, all, 20 uh, firefighters to man a station. Is that what I'm understanding? It's 17. Here? At this point in time, we're, we're uh, allocating for 17 personnel to, per uh, to man a station. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, let's stay ahead of, you know, I've talked to you about it before. Let's stay ahead of the, uh, the curve and make sure we have the manpower to put in the station 15 and 16 when they hit so mm -hmm. you finish yes four. I, I, yield. I, I yield for the district one uh, down at station 12 is our ambulance staff 24 7. it is not that is what the three of these positions three of the 20 um positions that you see here are to staff that full time we've we've um allocated enough in the uh, in previous budgets to be able to staff that half time and so we run it about 12 hours a day uh, so these additional personnel will give us enough personnel to be able to staff that truck um, full time well, I thought it was already staffed full time That's no we had we had the budget allocated for those three positions from July 1st but we have not uh, had the approval from the board to hire those positions yet that's what we're doing here tonight and um, so once we hire those positions we'll be able to staff that that vehicle as well okay thank you mm -hmm. you indicated right here said approved with Henry County Fire Department to hire 20 certified employees and then somebody asked you the question it would take you 16 weeks for fire to train them and then 22 weeks for EMT so they won't come in here they you won't hire them as being certified is that correct we will we will hire the best qualified persons that we can find for the position and that's what we do with any position that we have right. open if we find personnel that are already certified and meet our certification needs then we'll hire those folks and they'll come online quicker barring that we will train them from 
you know, from the ground up, and it, that's a longer right. process. So yes. ultimately, in terms of what the budget shows, you're going to be paying certified personnel at some point in time during this next year, and that's how the So we're going to try to get certified employees created. before we, oh, we always do. put somebody in the training program. We always try to do gotcha. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? District 3. Uh, Chief, uh, you heard comments tonight that we have lost some of our staff to uh, the hospital. How many uh, personnel have we lost to the hospital in the last year? We've lost approximately 19 of our paramedics since January uh, to um, local hospitals, mostly to, um, uh, to Piedmont Henry, uh, but some have gone to the Piedmont uh, programs in Noonan as well. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, so we're actually training these people for 38 weeks. Actually, for paramedic training, it's a, it's substantially longer than that, and typically they don't get that until they've worked for us for a couple of couple or three years. It's another year and a half long program for us to train paramedics. We do that in house through our training division. We are one of two certified fire department training uh, divisions for paramedic programs in the state of Georgia, one of 10 in the country uh, that have the accreditation to be able to train paramedics. So it's an extensive process that we have for our paramedic uh, training program. Chief, from the start to finish it, what does it cost the county to train them? Um, from start to finish to train a paramedic? Yes. Um, I don't have that figure right off um, the top of my head, but I can get that for you. Do we have any kind of plan in place where we get these new recruits to sign a contract with the county that if they don't stay within a certain length of time that we get some money back from their training? We have not. Um, we have not pursued that. We've looked at that uh, in the past, and we've and I've spoken to um, several people on the board. I've also spoken to uh, several people on staff about that, uh, but we don't have anything in place at this time to do that. Do you know if other departments in other counties have such a policy? I do. I know of one other county that does. Most of the counties that I'm aware of in the metropolitan Atlanta area do not have a policy like that. Um, but um, I know of one other county that does. Um, it hasn't seemed to uh, stem the product or the problem of losing paramedics for their department. I spoke to one of their uh, one of their uh, battalion. I'm sorry, one of their division chiefs this week, and he said he's losing paramedics the same way we are. So it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have really had an effect in his, uh, his agency. Thank you. Sure. Any further questions? Somebody move that we approve the Henry County uh, Board of Commissioners to approve the Henry County Fire Department to hire 20 certified employees in the amount of 998996 and 42 cents. So have a motion to District uh, 4. Second District uh, 1, any further discussion? I want to say raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. So move. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we're going to move to splice resolution approving proposal to furnish and install nine additional surveillance cameras for the Henry County Jail. Ron Burkhalter. Good evening. On January 20th, 2015, the Henry County Board of Commissioners approved Resolution 15-21 for Comtech to furnish and install surveillance and access control equipment at the Henry County Jail. The Sheriff's Department has ident identified a need for nine additional surveillance cameras to be located in the visitation area of the jail. Comtech has provided a quote, which is attached, of $15,825 to furnish and install all necessary cabling and equipment for the nine additional surveillance cameras to be located at the jail. Comtech currently has an annual contract for all the network cabling for the county and is the sole source provider slash installer of the ONSSI surveillance equipment. The SPAS department is requesting authorization to use SPAS for calendar year 2015 funds to purchase the nine additional cameras. Yep. 
if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Not to have a resolution uh, in the book approving the proposal to furnish and install nine additional surveillance cameras for the Henry County Jail. I have a motion for District 2. Second. Second, District 3. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. We'll move. <laughs> Next, we have a resolution approving a budget amendment to reconcile Splash 3 program management using available unallocated Splash 3 funds. Uh, Ron, again. Yes, sir. Plus three program management currently has an unfunded balance in the amount of $378,178. A budget amendment is needed to reconcile the SPLOS three program management. SPLOS three has an unallocated fund available in the amount of $541,667. Staff recommends approving a budget amendment transferring $378,178 from SPLOS 3 unfunded, unallocated funds to SPLOS 3 program management. Anybody have any questions or comments? If not, we have a motion to uh, Board of Commissioners to approve the budget amendment, reconcile SPLOS 3 program management. So moved. Have a motion, District 5. Second. Second, District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Next, we have a resolution approving a budget amendment for the Fairview Road using available Splash 3 funds. Ron. Yes, sir. Splash 3 Fairview Road has pending right of way condemnations. A budget amendment is needed to fund Fairview Road pending condemnation settlements. Funds are available in the following Splash 3 accounts District 4 resurfacing 160609 District 5 resurfacing $63,357. Unallocated SPLOS 3 funds, $163,489 for a total of $387,455. Staff is recommending approving a SPLOS 3 budget amendment for Fairview Road, SP3029, using available SPLOS 3 funds. Have any comments or questions? If not, we have a resolution Henry County Board of Commissioners approving a budget amendment for Fairview Road using available SPLOS 3 funds. So have a motion from District 5. Second. Second, second from District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Next, we have a resolution approving the use of construction savings for additional landscaping and condemnation settlement for Fairview Road. Run. Yes, sir, again. Plus 3 Fairview Road has a construction budget of $7,972,629.35 and is nearing completion. The final estimated construction cost is $7,414,187.28 with an estimated savings of $558,442.07. The original median landscaping was valued at $38,000 $760.90. The entire landscaping plan has been revised and upgraded, including two additional medians for a total of five. And again, in the original, there was only three. The updated landscaping plan has an additional cost of $222,680.91 for a total cost, which is added to is $261,441.81. After completion of the additional landscaping, there's an estimated construction balance of $335,761.16 that staff recommends be used to fund pending condemnation settlements. Staff recommends approving the use of construction savings for additional landscaping and, and condemnation settlements for the Fairview Road Project, SP3029. Anybody got any comments or questions? <clears throat> District 5? Um, Ron, I know Rocky's not here, but um, last year, last week we were looking at um, a deficit of about $1 million, and I'm trying to figure out how did we find the savings. Maybe Fred can answer that question. Excuse me, there was a, a shortage? Yeah, according to Rocky, we were going to have a, a shortage in terms of covering the landscaping as well as the condemnations. And so I'm trying to figure out how do we go from one or 1 1.2 to 
to having a having a savings of um, over half a million. Good evening, commissioners. Mr. Holmes, there were several things that were in the transactions that were described initially on. Uh, the first part was some of the money was transferred uh, that came from District 4 to help pay for the manager. That, that reduced that first number. Uh, there's some other projects that had some left over. I think it was 67000 or something along that line. So we kept willing a way to get it down to it. The bottom line is that the construction project had some reservations from other uh, areas of SPLOST 5 District I'm sorry, District 5, Splash 3. So that's how we moved that money around. It was unallocated. So we've reduced these lines. You've had some additional revenues come in. And also, remember, you changed some of the landscaping. We found some value in going from that ground cover to something else. So it's been a number of different things since we've been working on this project. So I want to clarify, I never changed the landscaping. Um, when we, had, when we um, uh, initially designed Fairview Road, the whole project was supposed to be landscaped. So when I saw the 38,000, all of a sudden I was, you know, kind of blew my mind, but I'm glad that we rectified the situation. Um, but I was just curious, um, cause I don't want to get to a, to a situation where we, uh, where we, uh, we're in a situation where we run out of uh, capital in order to finish the project. So I just want to make sure that the money is there and that we're going to move forward with the beautification ASAP. I understand the contractor had some concerns about the weather part. Um, and when I said the ground cover, remember we had those lilies in there that mm -hmm. were very expensive. So we supplanted those with uh, the more tufted material, more weather resistant. And I think that gave us some, uh, quite a bit of savings in that part too. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. That's okay. Please. Sure. The uh, schedule here shows that um, what for phase two was projected was 7.9 million. What SPLOSH management's been able to do is to communicate with Rocky this week and find that the anticipated <coughs> finalization of that contract will be 7.4 million, leaving 5.58, 558,000. And then the uh, use of the uh, 261 minus 38 you mentioned for landscaping is 222, leaving 335,000. And that'll be for condemnations. And then okay. the past resolution, which added 387,000 to Fairview from these various places, less there's a for shortfall presently in the Fairview project to 42,000. And then you've got 340,000 for the settlement on the uh, Walgreens. Correct. Okay. So that basically will leave you now 340,000 for future condemnations. Okay. So at the end of the day, your condemnation presently that settled is taken care of, the shortfall is taken care of, money is in there and your landscaping is taken care of. The key is we've got to come in at 7.4 on this uh, phase two construction. Gotcha, okay. okay. So how soon can we move forward on the landscaping? And I would like to see it move Commissioner, pretty quickly I'll, like tomorrow. If, if, the, if, the, the, if this is approved tonight, if we can get the purchase ordered. I'll be in contact with Rocky, okay, to get to get the landscaping started. Okay. The hard efforts. Feels easy. Everybody do it. Thank you. Any more questions? Comment. We got a resolution here to County Board of Commissioners approving the use of construction savings for additional landscaping and condemnation settlement for Fairview Road. Somebody move in that direction? So moved. Have a motion District 5. Second. Second District 4. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Same sign. So moved. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, just Commissioner Prince, just to answer your question. We received the bids on Station 14 next Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Um, I'll bring that to the board at the earliest. Uh, 14 or 16? 14. 14. 14. Okay. Luella. Okay. The, the, one, the same one they were talking about, the staffing. Okay. Uh, and if we do that and, and uh, we get under construction January, February, it's a nine month construction and that falls in line with the October date for the hiring okay. of the staff. Where are we at on 15 and 16? 15 and 16 are, last time I had told you, we're almost 98% on both of them on the design. Right, right. Very close. All right. And um, so we're 
going to be turning those in for review. When? The civil, the civil's already in. Okay. They're in for review right now. Okay. We'll be sending the architecturals in within the next two weeks. Okay. When do you see us letting these? Once, once we have the the uh, the approval from the the building department, we can let them. You know, again, with the general fund and the staffing of the. But both of them will be ready at the same time, and we could we could let both of them at the same time. Okay, we'll need to talk about that, and county manager, we need to get ahead of getting those firefighters ready to get in that station because I am not going to build a station and have it sitting there empty. We did that once before, and it did not blow over very well. So um, let's get ahead of that. But um, thank you. Yes, I'd sir. like to get it late as soon as I can. Okay, in sir. 16. Uh, Ryan, thank you for all your hard work on it public safety complex in Locust Grove they broke ground we're moving forward now correct yes sir uh, commissioner I met with uh, the contractor this afternoon that that you had awarded at the previous meeting J.R. Bowman yes sir uh, he's he's returned all the documentation he has his signed contract from and we have his signed contract we have all of his insurance information and when I met with him today we're going to set up a pre construction conference that we have it'll be an internal and we'll have one with the building department It'll be separate within the next two weeks we're going to get that set up he's going to take a look at his schedule and see what with the holidays coming up but yes we're we're moving forward with it again appreciate your hard work yes anybody else have a comment about the fire station before we move on uh if not we're going to move the henry county board of commissioners consider offering a 30-year lease arrangement for our property at henry county airport on a case-by-case -case basis Lyndon L. Bonner, County Manager, Exhibit 17. Commissioners, um, as you're aware, there's been a lot of renewed interest in the airport, and since we've started going back and looking at the contracts that are available and the property that's available, a number of people have showed some interest. And that right now, the instant question before the board is whether you have a, an interest in, in having these extended leases. Now, I worded it in such a way to say case-by-case -case basis because that's really how they're coming in. Um, we've got some proposals saying 30 or 50-year or basis of it, and that was what was put before us. And I think the developer uh, deserves an answer, and if you voted up, we'll set about trying to identify the ways and means or the vehicle which you can allow that to get you beyond the one-year constraint that you currently operate under and try to have those extended periods for it. That'll have to come back, but in the instant case, we just needed whether the board has, has an interest to look at this on a case by case basis. District two. I, I know there's been discussion and um, we've actually got a, a good email from um, the, the chairman of the development authority. I know he's, he's joined us here tonight too, probably because he's curious to know about this is that I, I understand the concern that we, we want to, I mean, legally, a lot of times we have to discuss things on a one-year basis. Um, but we have additional tools that we can employ, and that's one of the things we've been talking about as a board, is that we have the development authority, and they have just more tools in their toolbox that allows them to deal with more long-term, you know, contracts, because that's why they're structured the way they are. And it, and it allows them to think about the economic engine of the county with us being in the background to also be support on that. Yeah. And um, when I've, I've gone through, you know, the, the we've had two 30-year contracts kind of come across our desk here recently. Five, I guess. Well, two have come across mine, you know, that had meetings and, and really wanted to talk about things. It appears that um, we have some viable projects here. And, and I want to see if maybe, County Manager, you can help us what do we do we need to make a motion what do we need to do to actually move forward or have more communication about letting the development authority take a lead role on some of these more the longer term lease arrangements well clearly that's one of the um, goals that you set up the uh, development authority to deal with these kinds of projects that are, require an outleg or uh, another extension of the county government uh, we would have to enter in some arrangements with them, come back as a resolution where you all would uh, consider and appoint this type of assignment to them to manage the contracts over the airport. But it's not the, the first step. Uh, the first step was tonight was to find out whether you have an interest in it, and, but it was only for the instant cases that have been presented. I felt like 
they'd ask us enough they wanted to find out what's the answer up or down could have an interest but we now if there is we need to find out the vehicle that would get us there and if the board is going to act upon that at this point uh, then I, I feel like we've got one vehicle in place there may be others but the one that's most immediate really ready is the development authority now the, the other aspect of that is is that we have a limited amount of asset there it certainly is a jewel and it's underutilized I think we all agree that there's potential there one of the things that has come up is I want to take a longer view of it and if we can take that view and take the time to work out the arrangements with the development authority and look at a longer view of who's going to manage it. What is our vision further down the road? You know, the three years, five years, what are we doing in these intermediate contracts for 30 years or 50 years, which very well may affect how someone who's really wanting to come in and run the airport for us, who's willing to make these capital investments that would warrant a 30, 40, or 50 year plan. And I'm talking about taking the cost of making certain runways and maintain operations, other capital improvements that are for the public good that would remain there. So in that line, I'm certainly supportive that, and I believe we're going to have to find a vehicle. It's going to be difficult for me as an investor to want to go out and put a, a new building down and build a restaurant or FBO type of facility without having some assurances there uh, on a 30 year basis or some peer where I can recoup my investment. The other side of it is, is I'm, a, I'm accustomed to the one year. You know, there's a big difference in the perpetuity requirements that county government has as opposed to a corporate entity. The county's going to be here. There's no question about that. So the corporate aspect of it, you know, are there some risks to be taken with it? Yes, they are. The, the only thing I'd add, you said it with the, kind of those last three or four sentences, is that I recognize as government officials and people who work in this body, we're comfortable with the one to year, one, year over year agreement and, and have the best intention. But I know the corporate side of things, the businesses that are making the material investments, is a, a, an extreme limitation if they can't get some assurances in the long term. And, and I know we would do everything in our best interest to protect the, the people and tell them we were acting in good faith to them. But I think that really the only way we're ever going to be able to get material investments in our community, especially at the airport, is if we take it off our plate, put it on the development authority where they have those additional tools. And I guess if you're looking for feedback, I will start the, and we can all share, I want us to go ahead and start moving in that direction. And I'd like us to go ahead so we could share with the, the five people who have talked about long-term leases. We can tell them, if, is this a two, three, four month process? How, you know, so we can kind of let them know what this looks like so they don't feel like we're dragging this out for the sake of dragging it out because they've got investments they're trying to make in the community so I, i'd like to move forward with that however we need to do that well i think just to echo that i think that's one of the charges that y'all uh y'all heard me say early on the airport is a, an area that we need to focus on um and talking to michael and uh we decided tonight we're gonna let him go do some exploration with other airports there's an airport managers association we can go to and I want to bring back some pictures for you so you can look at what the airport could be in 50 years. Right now, we're really living, you know, what's it going to look like on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? We're going to have to look out further. Uh, it's an asset. It, right now, it's being underutilized, and I think it can do a lot more for us in the future. But I want to put the best vision plans and assemble the best team we possibly can. And then I'm more comfortable with investing. If we're going to invest in a private party to come in here, I want them to be willing to invest in Henry County Airport substantial because it, it would relieve us of some of the capital expenditures that are likely to come up with the operation of an airport and, and I'm, I'm seeing these things in a, in a different perspective this isn't my first airport so as we go down this road I, I'm more interested in a longer view and certainly if it's three months two months six weeks we want to come back with what some alternatives are for the board that will see us in this 40 and 50 year perspective then I think we've got an, uh, something we can offer those persons who want to come in and make substantial investment, the 70, 80, 100 million dollar types of investment that the airport deserves now. District one. I agree with uh, Commissioner Preston. We need to move forward with this and get this issue addressed. And so that's, you got mine? Yes, sir. District four. County manager. I I need a point of clarification here. Um, 
my, I agree and you know, I understand from business point of view your 30-year lease um, how that works and why we need to do that I'm just not comfortable from this seat saying I would be agreeable to a 30-year lease um, I am agreeable that we probably need to look at other avenues and other vehicles to do this this vote here are you asking if we're amenable here as commissioners or are you asking are we okay with getting the development authority or looking at other vehicles my only issue is clear here is to see if the board has an interest tonight of us going forward and developing the 30-year arrangements with people who's got proposals uh, you've all received the emails where the, they want to go ahead and do work right here and now well I don't have the facility and I don't have the board's authority to do that so the first thing would be okay if it's something y'all want to do now you have to give me some direction in that regard go ahead and develop a 30-year contract for these specific ones or who's on the table then I've got to sit back and find the vehicle which is going to be acceptable to board to manage that and administer it in a way that's compliant with what our policies are I don't think that's the more difficult step I think that's actually going to be the easier step we've got a partner in the development authority and I believe that's probably the logical way to go but I'm going to look at everything I mean that's that's what you charged me to do but it was not my intention tonight to ask the board anything about allowing specific contracts negotiations for any one of the five or ten or, or there may be a lot more out there and we still have some other contract issues that need to be looked at in my uh, my, my purpose is to make certain that we've preserved every incentive that we bring to the table for a developer who's really willing to come in and spend the kinds of money there that the airport deserves. So my question, to answer your question, tonight I just want to know if you have an interest in 30 years uh, leases. And if you do, I'll start working in that direction. Um, I was um, of the mind that the persons who've been most uh, engaged with this needed some sort of decision up or down uh, whether you would do it tonight and what, what your interests were so the way I coined this is to make certain if your board is interested in 30-year arrangements which I think we should I'm going to go start working on that but not for the instant cases I don't want to do it on a case-by-case -case base I want to have a longer projection for you to look at that we have the assurances that the airport's going to develop the way you want it and the way it should be okay. Mr. Commissioner, I think to answer part of your question as well, the likelihood is that if we enter into 30-year arrangements with any end user at the airport, it will likely be through an entity like the Development Authority. You likely won't be that end user's landlord. You would enter into an arrangement with the, with the Development Authority. They would then enter into the arrangement with that end user. And so really I think what Mr. Bonner is asking you is should we pursue that avenue or an avenue like that because right now I can tell you there's there are a couple of people that want to pursue projects and they're waiting on us to to answer questions that we are not in a position to answer that we need guidance from you do we do we sort of open the book on all these options knowing that the likelihood is that the development authority is going to be our conduit or do we just tell them you know what there are there are one-year leases in place now Specifically, we've got three hangars, I think, that are occupied under year-to-year -year leases. Somebody wants to come in and get a longer arrangement, and they're waiting on us to sort of answer the question of, is that idea of a longer arrangement acceptable? Before we even talk about the details, we don't even know what all of the details will be. We want to know, is talking about a long-term lease even worth our time and energy and the ultimate user's time and energy? We don't want to put somebody through a big long set of negotiations come here and have the board say we don't want these long-term arrangements we want to know if a long-term arrangement is an acceptable way of going about this I that, um, we were looking to uh, develop the airport as an economic engine yes sir um, more focused on um, aviation and logistical um, type of um, companies I don't know I mean I and I wouldn't have a problem with a 30-year lease for those type of um, those companies I don't know if classic cars is my idea of a company that's going to help build an airport into something that's going to attract industry to um, to Henry County. But a 30-year lease, I mean, you have to invest in yourself before others are going to invest in you. And a 30-year lease for classic cars just doesn't it doesn't move me at all. Well, there's, there is no doubt 
that we have an asset. And if you were to convey a usage through an agreement for 30 years, the equity that goes with that improves that company's position immediately. It's just a very good contract to, to have. I think looking out past that, and I think my first conversation with you was about the economic engine at the airport. But I, I, that's why I'm saying I, I want the long review. I think the board understands that there's got to be a return on the investment we make anywhere. It's just on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not certain that's the best ven venue we need to pursue with it. Whether it is with the development authority, that's going to be a board decision. I want to look at everything. But the truth is, the, the matter of what we're going to have for 50 years, what do I get in return for that? And that's what I'm trying to make sure that when 50 years from now they look back, we made some good decisions. And I'm expecting someone willing to come in, not on a case-by-case -case basis, but someone is going to take over the management, maybe look at the contracts, bring in a different kind of business, and make the kinds of capital improvements that that airport deserves. And we're going to have to do. There's no question that the demand for this airport is going to go up. It's just, it's just a question of what the timing is when we put this thing together. So whether it's the, the development authority, I think we're going to have to look at something that will allow this return of an investment over a long period of time. But it, I don't want to do anything to diminish what our offering would be to that larger investor who wants to come in and put that $70, $100 million into an airport. Then I think it has a different flavor for me all the way around for uh, making a deal that gives them that time to recoup their investments. I'm not on board with a, a long-term 30-year agreement. District 4. Let me clarify my position. I would be fine with the uh, development authority, but I would not support a 30-year lease from this seat. And that's just my position. So I just want to clarify that so we're all on the same page. And as we go through it, I think the attorney captured it pretty well. Working with through the development authority, we can do some things a little bit different to give you some scenarios that are, may fit it. I mean, there may be something out there. It may be absolutely, wait a minute. Yes, I'll give a 30-year lease if you do this, 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 and this. I can see in my mind those kinds of improvements might be a good investment for us. It takes the burden off of the county. We get somebody who has expertise in running airports, and, and we keep making this step forward. Uh, but am I interested in having uh, an equity increase just because we've got a contract with the county? No, I'm not. I think that's a, a little too short a vision for me. My instant question remains the same, though. I think we'll come back with other alternatives. Michael and I have got a lot of footwork to do. Certainly the Development Authority has some considerations to make with this, and the Board will have to make some decisions. But that's down the road. I was asked, and it was important that they know whether we would do a 30-year lease and whether we would do it tonight. And I said, no, we're only going to find out if they're interested in 30-year leases, and if you are, what does that look like? I'm hearing from the board it looks like a pretty substantial difference than on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. Thank you. Are you Anybody else have any comments or questions? Chairman, I, I, I think we need to uh, listen to the development authority and see what they have to say. Uh, I'm kind of on board with having some type of long-term lease for as restaurants and that sort of thing, but I kind of agree with, with Commissioner Holmes. I, I don't know if classic cars is what I would consider a 30-year lease for. I just, it's my thoughts. I think that pretty well sums it up. It's kind of like flip a coin. At the moment, there's not enough information for somebody to really sit down and analyze it. So, I want, I want to clarify for the county manager, though. I mean, are we saying to move forward? Not don't get bogged down into the individual contracts. Are we giving the the county manager the authority to start working to create an instrument to work with the development authority? I mean, I, I guess we need to quantify the the votes or the thoughts to give you direction. I think the based on what I've heard. Uh, I, I'm in favor of, uh, of doing something at the airport, but 30 years, 50 years, I'm, and, and what is it? What's, what is it going to be? Okay, if we come up with a mechanism uh, and, and, and we make it ascertainable, then how, how do we pick and choose whether it's uh, uh, A, B, C, or D? Because it's going to be limited as to what we're going to do initially. So I think it needs to be some further uh, 
I, I think the board needs to have some blueprints uh, as to how we might can consider doing something. Alternatives. Alternatives. Yes, sir. And I believe that's yes. where I, I think that's where we're at. It's been it's been a month now, and I, we've got several initiatives. We've gotten off the ground. This is one that was important, and y'all expressed to me in all 10 interviews I've did with you. <laughs> so I'm looking at, here's some alternatives that we've got, but this one was charged, uh, we need an answer, and we need an answer now. Well, the answer is right now, if I'm reading the board correctly, I don't have 30-year options for you. The year-to-year -year one is the one that's available to you right now. I said that a few weeks ago, and there's, there's no surprise about that. But given us an opportunity to develop those, those vehicles that will accomplish it and look for the deals that may be appropriate, for you all to consider the longer terms of it, I think that's the way to go. So, so do you feel you've gotten consensus direction to know how to move forward? Have we given you? You haven't said that you are interested in the immediate case-by-case -case basis of the 30 years, and that was what I asked you. The extended leases on a case-by-case -case basis, and that was what I was looking for. You don't have to address it for me. The work that was already set out when y'all hired me was that we're going to be moving towards the airport and try to look at a longer range plan for that. The, the only thing I, I would add is that we didn't, it, it, I mean, and this is the big thing. This is the, the big political hot potato is that a lot of this board took heat because of capital purchases. We heard even a citizen come up tonight and talk about capital acquisitions. Yes, I think we're past that point, though. This board is not the board that bought these capital assets, but we are now entrusted with the fiduciaries to make sure that we don't just sit on assets of the county, that we're trying to figure out how we can turn this into an economic engine. And maybe I have a different worldview because I own businesses, and I can tell you, you wouldn't get a thousand bucks out of me on a one-year commitment, or a million, because we're talking about million-dollar investments. Nobody's going to invest a million dollars in your community if you say, yeah, we'll take your million dollar investment, but in a year from now, we'll have to decide if we're going to let you keep it. Keep, you know, because this is a yes. lease. This is not an ownership, complete ownership thing. This is a lease of making use of the county's asset. So nobody's going to invest a million dollars. Or as you said, we deserve a 70 to $100 million investment at the airport. Who is going to make that on a year to year basis? I tell you, nobody. And maybe I have a different perspective from, from running a business and an understanding that that's, you put investments into things you think you can get a return out of. And if you're worried, I mean, with the, the changing world that we live in with government, you know, an election can change things in a split second for you. No, we're not going to be able to bring outside resources into our community that will bring the jobs, that will bring the investment. So I'm a little disappointed that I haven't heard a consensus brought to you. Um, I will go on record for myself and say it, it's it, this is the part that troubles me. It's in my district, but I look at this as a countywide asset. The airport is a countywide asset, but yet to the voters, we I look like the chump because nothing has happened in three years at this airport. It's not me. I, I will t I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's get some money invested in this community and get some jobs brought here. But until we give you direction, we're we're kind of stuck, and. And that's the thing. I would like us to move forward with figuring out how we get the economic engine of this county rolling. Well, let me try this. Uh, I'd like to go forward and meet with Michael and the Development Authority, reach out and get some alternatives for you all to consider. Uh, my last comments were if we can find that program, those visions that uh, do warrant as an incentive for someone to come and spend those levels of investments, that 50, that 75, whatever that number would be, then clearly I think that might put a different spin on what the board's um, position would be on that type of investment. That's being realized of it. Uh, but at this point, uh, the direction I'm hearing is go ahead with what I've been doing and step up the pace. Keep your foot on the gas. Sounds good. Thank you. Unless anybody else has any comments in that direction. Okay. So oh, you want to be recognized? Okay, District 4. Thank you, Chairman. Did we want to go up and down on this? Do we want to vote on this? No. There's no resolution. There's no resolution. No. It just kind of get a consensus as to move forward with, for me, he's moved forward with some alternatives. Uh, it may be some long-term alternatives in there, but uh, it, it's, it's kind of 
if, if it was a determination of the board not to to go long term by consensus of the majority, then obviously he wouldn't move forward. Okay. So the the deal is he going on. He, he's, he's, moving forward he, he, he's, he's moving forward <laughs> and he's going to come back with some some alternatives after meeting. But uh, okay. I, I think if it was to go up or down on a 30-year thing here, it wouldn't be any interest in it. So I don't think that would be the purpose of, of his intent. If anybody has any different thoughts, we need to share it at this moment. Otherwise, we're going to move on. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, we have a resolution terminating the agreement for legal services with Fincher, Denmark, uh, and Minifield LLC. Give you a little background. Uh, back in uh, September the 2nd, 2014, the board uh, determined that they would uh, do uh, farm out uh, their legal counsel, and they took two mechanisms. One was they hired uh, Patrick Dogstetter as the county attorney, and then they hired uh, uh, Steve Fincher's firm to uh, handle all the litigation. Now, since then, uh, in, uh, we, in the agreement that we uh, uh, signed with uh, Fincher's firm in September 1st of this year, we gave the uh, county attorney to do one of two things. He could either handle himself litigation or assign litigation to Fincher. And what, what I'm thinking is I think we tie in the hands of the county attorney. Now, he may use Fincher uh, quite a bit, but I'm, I'm thinking that I would like for the board to consider giving the county attorney the ability to pick and choose based on the issues at hand uh, to pick a firm that can provide uh, litigation in conjunction with the county attorney. That's uh, my thoughts and that's my feelings and uh, I don't know how the other board members feel about that but I, the floor is open for any discussion. <coughs> Yes, sir. Question. So we would still be using Fincher. It could be. Could be. On certain cases. On certain yes. cases that we would use. They, they may specialize in certain things where another firm might specialize in something else. But right now, Patrick either handles it, or if he doesn't want to handle it, it automatically goes to Fincher. Okay. Is that the way I understand it, Council? Yeah, I think you're correct, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Mr. Commissioner, yes. I, I, right now, Fincher Denmark is handling a number of condemnation cases that are well into, sort of past the point of no return. Wouldn't make any sense for me or the board to pull those cases from them. It would make sense for them to continue to work those cases on a, on a fee basis similar to what the contract is now. Um, there may be, and there have been, I think, some condemnation cases that have um, that maybe could have been pulled out and handled without sending them on to be fought and litigated, but pulled out and resolved at an earlier in an earlier time, maybe saved some money, and there may be some other types of litigation we get ourselves into. I don't know. I don't know what type of lawsuits we're going to face or not face over the coming time that wouldn't be covered by insurance. I can tell you that types of lawsuits we're going to see covered by insurance. We're not really concerned about those. Those, we, those are being handled, and we don't really need to mess with those. But, you know, there's, there's no reason in my mind to, to make a drastic operational change that I, I suspect what you see happening today is what we will see happening in the immediate future. Over time, I don't know, maybe things change, but there's, it, there's nothing wrong with it. We're receiving good services from them. They're doing a fine job. Uh, the, the, case, the cases we've been able to settle, we've been able to settle largely because they got us to the point that we were able to settle. So, you know, we, hopefully we'll continue on as much like it is as, as, as possible. If there's a way I can save some money along the way, I'm going to do it. This is money saving move. Mr. Chairman wrote the or requested the resolution, and I think in his mind it's. And forgive me if I speak for you. I think there's a money saving element, and then I think there's also a, an element of opening the door to other options for other attorneys, to handle cases if necessary, or if if we get a type of case that falls in some experts range of expertise. Uh, you know, I'm sure I could sit here and think of the type of case that would be beyond something that my firm does or, 
or Fincher Denmark does. I'm, I'm sure it's out there. I can't think of it right now. But if it is, I would I would make the call to those people, whoever specializes in that. So I don't I don't think the idea is is to take anything away from anybody. I think the idea is to sort of streamline the practice and maybe put me a little more on the hook for the outcome of everything. I think that's a fair assessment as well. So anybody else have any questions or comments? If not, uh, I'm going to present to you a resolution terminating the agreement for our legal services with Fetcher. If, if somebody considered moving in that direction. Uh, so moved. Okay, we have a motion from District 3. Any second? I'm going to second the motion. We now have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All opposed, same signs. Okay. Motion carried. Okay. The motion was defeated. I, I think it went four to two, right? There's no prohibition, Mr. Chairman. Making a motion or a second. Thank you, Council. Okay. Anybody else have anything uh, else? We will uh, approve the minutes for the October the 20th, 2015 meeting. So move. Anybody move? We have a motion? Have a second? Second. Second from District 4. Uh, owner, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Uh, March 31st, uh, 2015 is amended. We found some errors in that one. Somebody want to move? We approve the minutes as amended for March 31st, so 2015. We have a motion, District 5. Second. Second, District 3. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. The uh, chairman and commission comments. Chairman has no comments. District 4. Comment. We recently had Veterans Day, and I want to thank all my veterans for coming out to uh, the parade out at the city stop bridge. And I want to thank Henry County Police Department, of course, for coming out and um, stop traffic for us. And I do want to give a big shout out to our firefighters. I tell you, I have to, I, I love to see that big American flag draped over 42. It, it makes me proud to be a veteran, and uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you. District 1? No, sir. District 3? I don't have any. District 2, District 5. County Manager, comments? Uh, yes, sir. Commissioners, I'm pleased to tell you that um, I'm continuing on with my departmental visits. Tomorrow will make my second day, and then I'll finish up uh, with the fire services and EMS. Uh, this week I was over at Senior Services, and uh, Mrs. Reed entered, um, bought me a nice lunch there, and I met some folks. We were able to go to a couple of facilities. We'll have one more day, um, a part of a day next week. Uh, where I'll continue on, you know, starting to schedule some other folks in the first week of December. Uh, relative to one of the things that came up tonight in regard to SPLOST, I've talked to each one of you regarding the reconciliation that we're going to have to do across the entire SPLOST arrangement. Uh, we've started on that. I want you all to see where the projects are. We're going to start updating that on a monthly basis. I feel like as we are getting in uh, the part of SPLOS 3 now, we're going to start being able to see what our exit numbers are and how these projects are coming out. Unfortunately, some of these projects are very old and prices have changed on them since we've put them out. So uh, I really have charged Rocky and, and, and Fred Aletta and myself, uh, I mean, all the smart people around to start bringing this together so we can see it on a regular basis. I don't want us to get to the end of a project and wonder where the money was or where the money went. So I'm really hopeful to get that to you before we get out of here um, you know, for Thanksgiving or as soon as Rocky gets back. We've got a few more hours work. But I, I think that'll be a very helpful document uh, for the board to have and understand how these projects are going forward. That's all I have. Can, uh, Attorney, you have anything? Nothing for me, Mr. Chairman. The upcoming meeting, we have a meeting on December 1st at 9 a.m. as a regular meeting. December 15th, 6.30 p.m. as a regular meeting. Somebody move, we adjourn. So moved. Oh, motion District 3. Second. Second District from District uh, 5 and 1. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. I couldn't tell who made the second. We
We're adjourned.